Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a video and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Today it is my privilege to welcome a very very senior healthcare professional from Bangalore Dr. Radha Shekhar. Radha, welcome to the show. Thanks as uh, those for the kind words. Uh, Dr. Shekhar is uh, the managing director of Lotus Laboratories. She's a she's a PhD in pharmacy. She's also the VP Global Clinical Operations for Teva Pharmaceuticals. She has published several research papers and in her own words, she sharpened her bridge skills during the lockdown. So Radha tell me a little bit about uh, your you know your early life and what would you say are three key milestones that uh, you remember as you got you know as you reached this point Okay Yeah it's been a very interesting journey starting from college where I to join the college in Mumbai called Udi City uh-huh. and I did my pharmacy there and uh, from then on the working career has been very interesting i worked in various different roles within the pharmaceutical industry i joined in api research moved into formulation research then moved into clinical research and within these areas worked in multiple functions whether it's project management regulatory affairs quality assurance all that mm-hmm. so key milestones one would be for me i mean i'm, I'm using it as a combination of both my personal and professional mm-hmm. life one of the key milestones was obviously taking the decision to move to bangalore because okay. i was born and brought up in mumbai and my whole life revolved around bombay my friends my working colleagues everything so it was a very big step okay. it did take some time to adjust to bangalore mm-hmm. but fortunately again i managed to get into a very good company here and had a very good working life so right. the transition to bangalore was good okay. that was an important change The second important thing was leaping into clinical research when it was just getting started in India in the late 90s early 2000s so 2001 lotus was started as a cro by a bangalore based group of doctors and my former boss mr raghavan so we set up this cro and it's then grown by leaps today we are part of teva pharmaceuticals through a series of acquisitions so that was the big change okay a very great personal goal for me was achieving my phd okay. because i did not do my phd straight from college okay. i started working after my pharmacy immediately even before the results were out i got my first job so then i just said okay let me get on to the industry hmm. then marriage happened kids happened and but there was always this nagging thing because i always liked the academics and research and study so hmm. somewhere there was this thought that i need to pursue further studies okay so quite late i would say in 2010 i enrolled for my phd completed it it was a fully research based phd in the drug discovery space right so completely again unrelated from work i did not want to a phd to be extension of my work in any way so it was a completely new area of chiral chemistry which i took up and so that was really very very fulfillment it gave me a lot of fulfillment yes So let's talk a little bit about uh, the work that you do now you know tell me a little bit about what lotus and teva do in india okay lotus in india we are one of the internal clinics teva has three internal clinics within their organization teva as you know is the world's largest generic drug company selling over 200 million prescriptions and being within their group they have one clinics in florida we have I have one clinics in Mumbai and we have the clinics in Bangalore I had both the Mumbai and the Bangalore clinics for Teva so and clinical research is only one part of what Teva does in India Teva operates out of nine legal entities in India mm-hmm. we are directly providing employment to more than 4000 people in India this is direct employment we have research centers at Noida we have two research centers in mumbai at ambarnath apart from our seawood facility we have one stability lab in chennai we have two very large manufacturing plants in goa formulation plants which are completely export and we have two 
API manufacturing plants, large ones in uh, Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. We have a small API plant again in Ambala. So we are operating out of multiple locations in India. This is Teva India with various different regal entities. Lotus is a 100% subsidiary of Teva. Our focus is basically clinical research. Okay. Okay, fair enough. So let's talk a little bit about the pharma industry. You know, the, the industry is booming and yet it continues to face a lot of challenges. What in your opinion are some of the key challenges the industry faces? Yeah, see, the I would first like to acknowledge the pharma, especially the Indian pharma industry's contribution to the world. We are the third largest in terms of volume, may not be in terms of value, because that definitely explains why our prices are generic and very much lower. Right. We have contributed a lot during controlling the AIDS pandemic in Africa. So the Indian pharma industry is truly a trailblazer. But yes, there are challenges. Because even though drug prices are still the lowest in India, we still, our population is so large, spread across such a wide geographical area, access to healthcare and even medical services in remote areas is very difficult. So the universal health coverage would definitely be something which all of us should look at. And this is where tech could help also because people are increasingly talking of telemedicine and e-pharmacy and uh, you know, consultations with doctors over the phone or over the computer. So this is definitely one area where we have to increase our coverage, both in terms of the availability of medical health as well as in the availability of pharmacy. The price control regime in India is very tight. The prices are controlled by the government, and the DPCO. So that, again, it suddenly the rules change and then the manufacturers don't know. So we need a long-term stable pricing policy. India has done very, very well in the export market. We have really exported to, in fact, Europe, USA are all very, very big markets. But there are lots of other new geographical entries, places like in Japan, for example, it's India occupies just 1% of the market share. So that should be a huge potential. China, we are not exporting much to China. In fact, that's the next problem. We import huge amount of raw materials from China. So if we could reduce our dependence on China because we all realize the supply chain problems which happened during the pandemic and suddenly we had to gear up on how to continue our manufacturing with all these delays. Right. So these are some of the challenges. Very interesting. You know, and I, I've spent 15 years as a pharmacy retailer. So I'm, I've got some okay. understanding. So, but you know, uh, coming to generics, you know, Tiba is a large generics manufacturer. Um, the government of India is asking a lot of people to start moving towards uh, generics, including all the Jan Oshadi stores. Yeah. Actually, generics uh, due to branded medicines, especially given the pressure on prices. I, I think there is a place for both. So when we talk of branded medicines in the rest of the world, actually we are talking about the real innovative brands. Like for the a company which has invested close to a billion dollars, invested 10 to 12 years, brought the drug to market and obviously has patented it and needs to recover some of his research and development costs. So these are the branded drug manufacturers and these are the big pharma companies, the Pfizer, Bristol Mayer, Squibs, Novartis, Sanofi. So these are the very big players. On the other hand, the entire almost Indian industry is the generic drug industry because we really do not have new molecules which have been discovered and taken to the commercial levels. Yes, a lot of research happens at the lab levels, but lab to manufacturing, I don't see we do not have much, much progress in that area. Okay. So though we have what we call as the big brands of the Sun Pharma, Dr. Reddy's, Lupin, Mm -hmm. Arbindo. These are all still generic imitations of the big pharma brands. So this occupies almost 70% of the market space in India. In Jan Aushadi, what the government is encouraging doctors to do is just write a prescription for the generic molecule itself. You don't, you just say amlodipine bacillate, for example. You don't say 
Norvask, obviously, which is a Pfizer brand, is very expensive. But we have brands from all the other Indian companies, the Sun Pharma and the others. So the government wants us to only write the salt form. This is good if we can ensure the quality of every manufacturer in India. So many of us know that okay, this product is from Supla. This product is from one of the big Indian manufacturers, Sun Pharma. So we are willing to buy it. If it is a very unknown company. we might still be reluctant to buy because they may be good but we have not heard enough about them okay. so, so i right. think there is a place for both okay which which is probably why the the indian pharma industry has invented this word which is branded generics yes yeah, it's an oxymoron <laughs> okay so you know continuing what you just mentioned about uh, research you also mentioned that we are the third largest in terms of volume in the world yet yeah. uh, indian pharma companies are not spending enough uh, on research to be able to produce their own uh, own molecules or uh, their own uh, patent yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you think is the reason for that i mean we certainly have the size in terms of market yeah we have a sizable market but i think the whole cost and investment is so high so we are talking of 8 to 10 years minimum to develop the molecule if you screen 10000 molecules you may barely end up with 10 molecules which can get commercialized because you have to do a whole lot of testing at the lab scale finish your in vitro experiments do the preclinical then the four phases of clinical trials so all of this takes very long so this long gestation period and the cost of 800 million to 1 billion dollars i think which becomes very very tough for the indian manufacturer so many indian companies what they have done is they bring a molecule to a certain level and then they either tie up or they give the molecule with some exclusivity or you know royalty figure this it's one is benefit the cost management and the long period of gestation second would be many of the actual skills needed in core new drug discovery we may not have a sufficient talent pool in that which can of course be built up if companies invest in i'm sure people would be willing to come and join us but it's essentially the cost is very very high for us as a developing nation we really need affordable medicines which our pharma industry has definitely provided not just to india but to the world and you know you spoke a little bit uh, you know a few minutes ago about our dependence on china and you are uh, you said you yourselves have a few i think api manufacturing facilities uh, what will it take for us to be able to move a much larger amount of manufacturing of the, the, the basic ingredients to india here the scientific talent is definitely available the will is collective will of the people is available but we need i think more support from the government and many governments have already announced schemes uttar pradesh for example has said they want to set up a large technical park for api manufacturing so there are governments which are encouraging this in china they did get a lot of government support they got lending of money at much lower rates large tech parks were set up the logistic cost was controlled so if india can pay some attention like if it's 1% of the total cost in china is the logistic cost in india it's 3% mm. our borrowings are at much higher percent it's almost double the cost of borrowing mm. a large technological park will help you control many of these costs mm. because many of these api manufacturings they would also need some co- common facilities right. power steam some of the utility generation if everybody has to set up their own nitrogen plant everyone has to set up their own boiler and steam generation or solvent and recovery distillation if all these things could be combined into one central support for the infrastructure then a lot of smaller players can come up and set up their own api manufacturing so we do have a lot of talent in chemistry and i think this is something which the, both the government and the industry are very very actively working on today especially after the disruption we have just seen and then i just kept cost very low because of their size the scale of manufacturing if we make 1 ton their batches are 10 tons so we also need to scale up to that volume to control our cost 
uh, so you know when i was talking to some other healthcare uh, you know leaders and they were saying that maybe 15 20 years ago india used to be a large manufacturing base and we actually gave yes. it up to china yes yes so that that was something which uh, the government yeah, we've seen it i've seen it happen during my lifetime because many of us have set up and most of the indian pharma had very big so again the prices became an issue the scale we could not compete with the pricing which we got from china so ultimately it becomes if i'm going to spend 100 rupees to make it and i can buy it for 70 rupees mm. i would buy it okay well so that well, we were a huge api hub at one point in time mm. so you know a general question uh, about the young people millennials gen z's you started uh, in the pharma industry when straight out of college yeah do you see a lot of young people the millennials and the gen z's coming into the industry or is are you are you beginning to see a problem with the talent coming in a little bit i would say there is a problem with the talent coming in because when at least when i started my career i grew up in bombay and all the pharma manufacturers were in mumbai we had baros welcome main yeah. baker sibagai ki hex ev- everyone was virtually manufacturing well within bombay right. now all the manufacturing jobs have to move moved away to outside the main cities mm. so definitely young talent is not willing to move mm. and because of tax reasons people are moving manufacturing into whichever state is offering better tax incentives like himachal and badi and places like that so yes some young talent is not willing to move second i think our generation had more patience we were willing to wait for our turn the millennials are more impatient yeah. so within a year or two years they want to know what next mm, i agree well said so let's move to another section uh, of, of our conversation and you know i'm going to talk to you a little bit about gender balance I'm, you know you're one of the people who has broken the glass ceiling running a very large organization gender balance all over europe all over america is talked about a lot and, and you know it's been going on for many many years in india it's much more recent i've spoken to a yeah, lot yeah. of women entrepreneurs women professionals and everyone seems to feel that not enough is being done what are your thoughts on whether enough is being done and what should be done uh, i would say 3 decades ago when i joined the industry there was it was more difficult to get roles in fact in one of my very first interviews mm-hmm. the person who interviewed me told me you're very good you answered very well but we can't give you a job in r&d because you are a woman so we would give you a job in quality control okay. and i said when i walked into the room you knew i was a woman you interviewed me for 45 minutes and now you are telling me you're not going to give me an r&d job which is what i had applied for mm-hmm. so i do not want to work here So this was way back in 82 mm. of course things have changed significantly now we have women but of course even today pharma industry i think of the 2.7 million jobs we are only 15 to 20% of women mm. so there is still a striking inequality but in the r&d space there are a lot of women who are now there sales and manufacturing because sales involves a lot of transport uh, travel across the country and and manufacturing involves a lot of night shifts and late shifts mm. women have generally been less maybe if more and more marketing moves into the digital space we might see more women going into sales and marketing also okay very interesting so i there has been definitely a reduction in the impar- when we interview candidates today at the entry level it's absolutely equal and you just get in on merit there is no reservation for women or for men you just compete on merit and we don't need any concession very nice but can we do more yes i think we just have to we have to change the way we think we cannot think of either either way the men or the women as one being inferior to the other yeah. so i think habitually as leaders if we consciously display a behavior which treats all colleagues irrespective of backgrounds or gender equal that's a culture which will percolate and i think at teva as an organization we have always valued both gender diversity and inclusion of everyone nice so that is one thing second 
And thing is, we are also within the organization. I can say we have a number of women leaders. So these are also setting examples. Some of our senior most people are women, and these are setting examples yeah. to the men around. Very nice. So and I would say I've not faced any specific challenges because of being a woman leading the organization. Terrific. So I've got time for a few questions for you uh, personally. My first question is that what does success mean to you? Okay, to me personally, success is always a job which is well done. A whole team is involved. You have a goal. You meet it. Like I mean, I I can talk about my USFDA inspections. There is so much is that is written also about the quality issues with India and the problems we are facing with FDA regulators. Lotus, for example, we have 115 inspections, more than 51 FDA inspections. and all our inspections go through without observations so for me that is a huge successful track record today when i traveled last year and somebody from greece says oh we know lotus mm -hmm. that is okay recognition of the quality we bring to the table so success for me would be achieving your goals with total compliance and integrity data integrity and quality becomes very very paramount because we are dealing with human lives Yeah. No, it's not. You can replace something. So it's very, very important for us to acknowledge that that for me is success. And getting the whole team's involvement. My whole style of management is always getting in buy-in from all the stakeholders. Mm. It's not my goal. So it becomes our goal to achieve this. Okay. My next question is that you know, rather you've had such a successful career, you know, leading a very large uh, organization, lots of recognitions. where do you draw your inspiration from i think just from everyday stories that i read of course i mean if i talk on the scientific world always mendeleev who discovered wrote the periodic table way before the elements were discovered is always somebody who i really admire because he could predict the properties even before these elements were discovered mm -hmm. but yeah on a more day to day basis for me it's everyday stories in the newspaper of people who beaten the odds who come up in spite of the difficulties mm -hmm. and i like these people who embody the value tough times don't last tough people do so it's literally the people who live that people like my own mother in law at home who such a support who's always there to say okay so what let's move ahead so these are the real life inspirations for me and my last question to you you started off as a young pharmacist and have come right to the top of an organization what would your advice be to a young individual starting off their life in the corporate world okay one would be to make sure your knowledge is always updated especially in the research industry mm -hmm. we need to constantly learn new things so i tell most of my juniors when i meet them for the first time never let your 20 years experience be the first years experience multiplied 20 times mm -hmm. so people say i have 20 years but you've been doing just the same thing you've not mm -hmm. learned much so constantly telling people change roles even if it is within the same organization get into different departments look at things from different perspective mm -hmm. so constantly learning i think is something which i would definitely tell and second thing is for me at least personally and not today because i have money even when i didn't have money 30 years ago it was never about the money mm -hmm. so i again an anecdotal evidence from one of my interviews mm -hmm. where he asked me how much do you want I said, if it's an R and D job, I want four fifty, and if it is a, a quality control job, because those typically women were only given the QC jobs, and where you would go to the lab, analyze samples, and come back thirty fifty. And I said, why? He asked me why. I said, because if the job is interesting, then I just need money to come and go to work. That's all. I don't need anything more because I was staying at home with my parents. But I think that's very very important. People cannot put money. before they should find the job they love and continue in that field that becomes very important and with you will, it's not sustainable Fantastic. there will always be somebody earning more than you less than you and i don't think money should be a parameter of success absolutely right very well said rather thank you so much it's been such a pleasure speaking to you i wish you lots of success in everything that you do 
Thank you. Thank you so much to Thank you for listening to the brand called You videocast and podcast. A platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.